Bird looks confused by the southpaw. I think you're right, Chick, but he's getting hit with left hand, straight right hand. He's not moving like he used to or like he did before. We've seen him here before. That's right. He's won 17 out of 19 fights. 12 of them by knockout. Pichardo in the maroon trunks has scored 23 of his 25 victories by knockout. Oh, that was right on the belt line, and it's a legal punch. He's Three. hurt, Chick. He yep. spit out his mouthpiece. That hurt. He's not going to get up. I think this fight's over I with. I do, too. He's counting in Spanish, even. Wow. Chuck Hass at the referee counted in Spanish. That shot to the midsection just simply drove all the air out of Pichardo, and he could not move. He was literally paralyzed on his knee. He's not hurt, but it was one of those blows that just takes you out of it. That's right. He, he took it right there. Right. I mean, that's a, the picture-perfect shot. That's where you want to hit to go, right up in the mix, midsection. And that does, like you said, Chick, it does paralyze you, and you can't talk, you can't move. I really think up to that point that he was ahead in this round. But now let's take a look at the replay. And I think you'll see the punch land right about the belt line. It's a solid right hand right there, just above the belt line. Straight uppercut, right up the middle. Perfect punch. Boy, that really put him down. He was absolutely helpless. First thing he did was let the mouthpiece slide out of his mouth. That was good. Facilitate breathing. Watch the right hand. Ooh. Boy, now you wonder why they hit the heavy bag. That's one of the reasons. Right there. They pound that big, big, heavy bag with that right and left hand. And to drive a punch like that, just uncontested at the midsection, that's a lot. We'll be back with the official time in a moment. <laughs> With low back pain, every step shoots pain. Up here, know what helps? Clinically proven back guard, a shoe insert. Watch how it absorbs foot shock to relieve low back pain. Amazing. Something down here can help up here. New back guard from Dr. Scholes. Imagine you had the power to visit yourself in the future. Wow. Nice boat. We win a lottery or something? No, we just took some advice from a London Life representative. But we don't like life insurance. Freedom 55 is more than life insurance. Here, hold this. A financial program protects the family and the future. Imagine the freedom of Freedom 55. Talk to a London Life representative. How's the wife? Not married yet. Won't be long. See championship action every week on Top Rank Boxing. Jimmy Lennon Jr. now with the official time on the knockout in the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, nine seconds in round number one. The quick winner by way of knockout. And he continues in the Forum Super Featherweight Tournament, Robert Bird. It was a stunning end to the fight because Bird really had been confused by the southpaw style, it appeared. And I bet you, I don't know, but I would bet that he was behind on all cards at that point. But this youngster took a real shot to the midsection and Javier Pichardo just couldn't get up. Now up in the ring with Ruben Castillo is the winner, Robert Bird of Dallas, Texas. Thank you very much, Chick. <laughs> that was a quick fight. Yes, I've been practicing on, you know, body shots. And, uh... I feel good, mind clear. That's all I need. Did did you have a uh, looks to me? It seemed like to me in the first round you're having a little problems with the southpaw. Well, he's a, yeah. It's hard to figure out a southpaw at the beginning. You know, I didn't want to come out trying to load up because he was a southpaw. My you know it was my first time fighting a southpaw in a while. I got teammates like that, but I don't start out too good because they got good counter punches and he he counted me one time good. So I saw you know I saw that so I took my time start picking where he can throw his punch and slip on his body shots and that's how I capitalize off of that. Well let's take a look at the at that at that shot that you took to the body that you gave him to the body. Okay, see I was watching him he then he came in. But he, we came with a body shot so I saw that. So I said I'm gonna go with mine with the right hand. I missed him with that left, then I came with the right right there. And well, that was perfect. I'll tell you what I was sitting down in the ring so I took the wind out of me and Chick both. Yeah. That was a good shot. Congratulations. Well, and good luck to you in the rest right. of this tournament. All Let's right. go back to ringside to Chick Hearn. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, more uh, boxing on Fight Night at the Forum. We'll have an eight-round super bantamweight preliminary, Daniel Garcia against Armando Castro. All that's coming up next from the Great Western Forum on Prime Ticket Television. Sunday nights mean the CSL on TSN. Join Vic Rauter and Graham Lincoln from the North York Rockets take on the Montreal Supra live Sunday, June 25th, starting at 7.30 Eastern. Sunday nights mean the CSL on TSN. Hi, kids. <gasps> Elizabeth. Who wants a Mr. Juicy? Please, please. But first, you'll have to catch me. <laughs> Mr. Juicy frozen treats from McCain. Flavored with real McCain fruit juice from Concentrate. Children love the flavors of McCain, Mr. Juicy, because of the fruit juice. It's a wonderfully wholesome way to celebrate summer. What flavor? Raspberry. McCain, Mr. Juicy, because of the fruit juice. Get it all the Players' players. Challenge offers a tough field of young new challengers alongside veterans, including seven-time world champion Martina Navratilova and defending champion Gabriela Sabatini. TSN will have live daily coverage August 21st to the 25th. Chick Hearn with Ruben Castillo. And next, it's Fight Night at the Forum presenting Super Bantamweights. Armando Castro and Daniel Garcia scheduled for eight rounds. This is not a tournament bout, but it should be a honey. I'm still, uh, you gave him a great line. You said the wind went out of us too when he landed, Bird landed that shot to the stomach. Boy, that was a hard blow. Well, at, the, at first, Chick, I thought it was a low blow, but after watching the replay, it was definitely right up the middle, right yep. in the midsection, and uh, of course, there was no dispute about that. It's a good shot. Our camera people did a real good job in covering it. And of course, that's the result of the producing of Jerry Romano in the direction of Susan Stratton. And the great camera people that work with them and the people out in the truck. They never get the credit they deserve. All right, Jimmy Lennon's ready to introduce the new fighters. Daniel Garcia and Armando Castro. Hi, fans, here we go. Next bout coming your way. This one is scheduled for eight rounds of boxing. Introducing to you on my left, he's fighting out of the blue corner wearing white trunks with black trim. Hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico, he weighs in tonight 122 pounds. His record, 22 wins, 4 losses, 10 wins by way of knockout. Introducing Armando Castro. And his opponent on my right across the ring, fighting out of the red corner in this eight-round bout. Entering the ring wearing black trunks with red trim. He hails from the east side of Los Angeles, California, and he weighs in tonight the same weight, 122 pounds. His record, 17 wins, four losses, nine wins by way of knockout. This is Daniel El Chato Garcia. Referee in charge of the state round bout, Gwen Adair. Giving you instructions already in the dressing room to have a good fight. The great female referee, Gwen Adair. Let's take a look at how these guys match up. Castro is 5'1, Garcia is 5'6. The weight's the same at 122. Castro's the older at 26. Garcia is 22 years of age, and the reach, look at that, Garcia, 68-inch reach, giving him an 8-inch advantage. Ready to go, round one, scheduled for eight rounds. Both are right-handed fighters as we start the first round. Castro, in the white trunks, had an amateur record of 14-1. and one. Now he's had 26 pro fights, and 10 of them, as Jimmy Lennon said has been scored by knockout. He is a stablemate of the man that'll put his WBC title on the line tonight, Daniel Zaragoza. Castro's got a baby face, and you know if he's from the same stable as Zaragoza, <laughs> he's gonna get hit by Zaragoza. Yeah, and look at the nose of Garcia. You know he's had a couple of fights before. Well, he ran in the back of my car one time. <laughs> <laughs> they say about Garcia in the red trunks that he is not overly aggressive. We'll keep an eye on that. He's a boxer puncher. Ismael Rivera is in his corner. Nacho Beristain handling Castro.
Round one of an eight rounder. Boy, the first fight ended in two minutes and nine seconds of the first. A tournament fight, too. That makes a short trip back to Dallas for Robert Bird. You know, and the best thing he can do, Chick, is go right back into the gym, not take this fight, uh, you know, don't get overconfident, go train and get ready for the next one. You're hitting that heavy bag with those shots. He'll take some more people out. That's right. Picharo, the guy he knocked out, it had 30 fights, won 25 of them, 23 by knockout. Good record. Here's our eight-rounder in the first round. Nice shot thrown overhand right by Castro on the white. Good right hand again by Castro. And now he has got Garcia hurt. And he goes down, and I don't know if he can get up. He got right on a left, finished it off after a solid right started it, and it's all over. He, it better be over, Chick. His eyes are rolling back. He's hurt. He's hurt very, very bad. He took three or four shots. They were coming so fast it was hard to count them, but each one was solid. And what do we got here tonight on fight night at the Forum? Back to back. Yeah, back to back. <laughs> first round knockouts. Well, we have a three-peat. She's <laughs> the first one I've had this year. <laughs> Behave, Jim. Right. <laughs> boy, oh boy, did he take some shots. Oh, right on the button. Three shots, overhand right. So that gives him 11 knockouts in his 23 victories. The youngster, Daniel Garcia, is on his feet, but he's, he's still got cobwebs, and oh. they bring the stool to him. You're absolutely right. He is hurt. There he is. Garcia's against the rope. Didn't see that overhand right. He had his, his left hand at his waist. And you'll see the uh, second one right over the top. Now there watch him come back again, though. Another combination this time, I think. Yep, the combination of the left did miss, but two rights in a row, and that was it. He was out right then. Well, when he landed, Chick, he landed right on his face. Yeah. And then that was it. You knew then it was over with. There's another angle. There's that. That was a good. That was on the temple, Chick. I think it's a little bit high on the head. That wobbled him. Watch this one. That's on the button there. Another one yet to come. Here it is. Oh, that's oh. enough. Whew. The way he when, fell, oh. we knew he was out. Yep. <laughs> you go back in the ring again, you just sat down. <laughs> yeah, there he is, Daniel Garcia, 22 years of age, and he says, what happened? We just started to fight. What happened? And his handler, Ismael Rivera, says, hey, you'll fight another day, and we'll be back to show you some more fights in a moment in the fight night at the Forum. against the likes of that, I'll ask for it. Pony Silver would have killed you. Would you care? Not in the slightest. You have no interest in me at all. You're certain sure. Ah, it would charm the fish. 
branches from the deep and the little birds down from the tree. You said you'd wish your wish. What? On Sunday? With my music floating over the countryside and Father Murphy himself pulling the rope. Tomorrow is Monday. Will you wish your wish then? I will. Hush now. Listen to my music. There's the post. Did the tea come down from Dublin? The pails, too. Where's everybody going? To the pub. Dobby is making his third wish. His third wish? They all fool. All fool, indeed. It's making too free with them jar beers. When you're soaked with the devil, you need a long spoon. From America? Nor a Cassidy song. Ah, uh, there'll be money in that. The pills, Mrs. Otto. Right, our pony. Michael McBride, Ref Cullen. That's from the Lord Fitzpatrick. I know his fist anywhere. Oh. Look at the elegant swirls and all. So oh, that's why his lordship left him behind. And now it is Michael this, and Michael that. There are Dublin, Jackie. And Michael, go and open up the manor house and get Katie into hell. The dirty usurper. Poor old Darby. Poor Katie. I wonder, does she know? Maybe you should drop it by and leave her see it for herself. Oh, you think I should know? No Christian being would do any less. Then I will so. Look up. His lordship wrote it to young Michael McBride and nary a word to Darby, now I ask you. <laughs> and you said you had an understanding with his lordship about me, and all this time McBride has the job. He won't keep the job if I have a son who's man enough to run him out of town. If you don't know why, you can read the card. Why didn't you tell me? Your father made me promise that I wouldn't. When are you throwing us out? Oh no, Katie. When? Well, today we're supposed to... You give short notice. I don't want you to leave at all. Why not? What does it matter to you if you break an old man's heart? 
You're a strong young man. You can find work anywhere, but no, you must come here and take me father's place. No wonder he's chasing the theory gold and him half out of his mind trying to keep some little bit of self-respect in the town. You can claim the manor house yourself. It'll be all we can do to move our belongings out of your house this night. Now you listen to me. I don't want your father's job at all. Not unless I can have the both of you along with it. I want you to stay here and be my wife. I love you, Katie. And I think that you love me. I... love you. We're all ready, Darby. We're gonna get a turf creel. A big one. What for? For to hold the gold. I not wish for the gold. Why not? Nine times out of ten, it leads to unhappiness. Wish for happiness, then. Human beings need bitter with the sweet. When I was a young lad, knee high with a sword of turf. My grandfather, Podge, God be good. He told me there was only one man in the town who was happy altogether. The village agent. <laughs> <laughs> Will you address me, your majesty? What's all this speech making about? Are you standing for parliament or what? Will I get you a drink, sir? You can make a wish. Now we'll get on with it. I'll do that. I know what I'd wish for, Darby. I'd wish for a grand big house on top of a hill as big as the castle at Kong. How would you look after it? Wait up the servants, too. You didn't wish for the servants. You didn't wish for the money to run the house. There you'd be with the big house in your hand, as big as a church. And you with the poorest church mouse in it. Did you hear that? Oh, he's got a head on his shoulders like Aristotle. Think of the best. Father! Then ask yourself, what else might I lose if I had it? Father, you've got to come and bit... catch the horse. No, no Kitty. His lordship is coming. We've got to move today. I'll move out of the way, Kitty. I'm making my throat wish. Not here, I... Father. No. No. Wait, your highness. Alone. Do you think I'd stay under your roof another night? I'll go to the inn. You can go to blazes. I'm moving to the McCarthy house. With night coming down on that mountainside, you can get yourself killed. Now give me that horse I'll get the horse.
pull the finger onto his lordship comes.
to myself, Brian, says I, tis at his side you should be. Well, then the truth of it is, I'm real glad to see you. Ah, uh, Darby, me boy, we've had great sport together. Ah, uh, we did. You've been a grand adversary. Sorry I am to see you come to this. I can endure anything if Katie was all right. Ah, you needn't fret about Katie. A fever broke the minute you set foot in this court. I'll be forever grateful to you. Um, 
Maybe you'll keep an eye on Kitty and Michael. I'll do that. It's a pity he won't be there to see them married. Ah, it's better for the old to die than the young. In the end, we all have to go. That should do. I wish I could go with you all the way. I wish you could too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a knowledgeable man? <laughs> Darby, you wished your fourth wish. Goodbye, Darby, my friend. <laughs> She's fine and sunsy like a baby walking from sleep. I suppose I'm the only man alive today to have rode in the coast of Bar and come back to tell it. <laughs> coast of Bar. It was his lordship's carriage you saw. His coachman told me they found you rooting in the mud of the road, so far gone in grief. You were out of your mind entirely. <laughs> Tony, I heard you were going to live in Kerhazabin. I am. Then why don't you be on your way and leave us alone? Don't worry, I will. I've heard enough silly blather about little people to last me a lifetime. What kind of man are you at all that doesn't believe in the little people? Maybe you'd like to find out? Indeed I would. You know, somebody beat me over the head that night, and I thought it was the little people. But when I spoke to King Brian about it, he said that you should take the consequences. What consequences? Indeed, that's what I asked his majesty. And you know what he said? He said, if I were you, I'd clout the blackguard in the face.
Club members, the Shrine Circus is coming to Seattle. It's the 1989 edition of Mao Temple Shrine Circus this Friday through Sunday at the Seattle Center Coliseum. There'll be lots of new and exciting circus acts for the entire family. And if you show your KCPQ Kids Club card to a Nile Clown, you'll receive a Kids Club Shrine Circus balloon. Sure is a nice day. Not with the prices you're charging for gas. Keep real still. This fellow's acting mighty peculiar. Nobody can know we're with you. Yeah, maybe not. Leastways, you'll be out of my hair by tomorrow. We should make it to Stony Creek by then. Uh, how much? Ten dollars even. <laughs> Mr. 
day, I think you buy too much. Yeah, Winky can't drink four quarts of milk between now and tomorrow. Well, if you two weren't joshing me about Aristotle Bolt being after you, uh, we might be together longer than we'd planned. He's a powerful man. Too po- Motorcycle cop. An attendant at the gas station. You won't get in trouble, will you, Mr. O'Day? It's not me he's after. I might not drop you off too soon. <laughs> I might be able to squeeze an honest day's work out of you. Take your fishing. Deep sea fishing, maybe. Get you two against the Africana Blue Marlin. Gia, what are you thinking about? About before. It had to do with fishing. With Daddy Malone? No. No, but we're on a boat. A trawler. Not like Daddy Malone had. I don't remember. Every lawman in the county is probably looking for this camper. There you are. Some hot chocolate? Thank you. Hmm? What's that you have there? My star case. Here. Let me show you what we found in the secret compartment. You see where Stony Creek is, Mr. O'Day? Yes. Well, there's a path that leads away from it, up into some mountains. We think maybe that's where we come from. Somewhere in those mountains. No. No. I don't think it was that way. Not exactly. There was an accident. Well, go on. I... It's gone. What kind of an accident? I don't know. In a car? No. At... On the ocean. And someone helped me save my star case. Well, who? Well, whoever put the map in the star case hit it so well. It took you all these years to find it. That's right, Mr. O'Day. Why would anybody do that? Well, maybe... Maybe waiting for you to get old enough to do something about it. Like now. Very peculiar, huh? I wonder... I wonder how I'd handle you kids if you were mine. Well, maybe that's why I never married, huh? But, Mr. O'Day, you were married. What? A long, long time ago. And she was so pretty. And you had a little house. Yeah. I can see it. It was white. With yellow shutters. And 
and there was a big elm branch over the whole roof. If Tony knows about people, he can keep things as they've been. What else? Well, your wife died only a few months after your marriage. And you were so sad. You took an oath that you'd never give your love to another woman. Or to anyone. And you never have. So dang much about me, you might as well use it. Jason, you understand? I like the name Jason. We didn't mean to make you sad, Jason. Well, come on, New. You're gonna dawdle here all night. Let's clean up here. Get some sack time in. We pull out of here a couple of hours before sunup. Probably headed towards Longview. Do you understand that, Sheriff Purdy? Mr. Duranian, a thousand dollars reward speaks mighty clear in these parts. You can count on me. Yes, I'll do that, Sheriff. Been a pleasure, real. A real pleasure. Vistas and try to extend their unbeaten string to 44 games. And they have a promotion here called the Money Tunnel. 30 seconds. You can put as much money into your pocket as you can. I want to help that gentleman count. Welcome back. Staying Alive. Remember that song by the Bee Gees? It might be the theme song for several franchises in the CSL this year. It was a desperate situation for Calgary this past week as they hit the streets. The strikers have launched an aggressive marketing campaign out on the streets of Calgary. By this Friday, they need to raise at least $100,000 to finish the year. So management, players, and the coach hit them all in downtown Calgary to hand out free tickets and donation forms. I think there's a lot of you know, problems because there's been a lot of communication between the players and the fans. So we decided we had a little chit chat on yesterday and the day before that we had to go out and meet the people to try and get them involved in what we're trying to do. Trying to drum up public interest in soccer is new to coach Tony Towers. Not only did he play professionally in Europe for 16 years, but he also spent time in the English First Division. It's a bit of a shock to me, but you know, if we can help the team, um, the players have res responded very well, and we're all out here now trying to save the team, so see where it goes from here. The players have even visited the corporate sector. Companies were supportive but shocked that the team needed help. Well, first of all, they were surprised. They didn't know that um, the strikers were in a lot of trouble. And um, once we explained the situation, then a lot of them are soccer fans, and a lot of them are just coming to our aid. While the players are on the street, Peter Welsh mans the office. The current problems have taken a tremendous toll on the general manager. He's been with the team since its inception and had to watch the club fold last year. I must admit, this last few weeks has been um, it's been pretty heavy, and uh, it's been long hours and um, things that it, you know you've got to do that take your mind away that away from what you should be doing. I mean, we've got performances on the field, and even now I should be concentrating on on players and and talking to players and uh, working with the coaching staff on the next game. But constantly you've got this thing in the back of your head saying, "Well, can I afford this? Or can we do that?" Or there's a road trip coming up, maybe I can cut a few corners here. And it takes it away from what you're trying to do and give 100% to the, to the team. Nick Gilbert, Calgary's star striker, is on his way home from Morocco, where the Canadian national team just won the gold medal at the Francophone Games. So should the strikers solve their financial woes, at least they know with Gilbert back in the lineup, they should be in good shape out on the field. That 
That's a report done by Teresa Hergert last week, and we're pleased to say that they did very well in their fundraising. They're going to complete the season. In fact, uh, Peter Welsh says they're going to start planning to for next year. Well, I'm delighted to hear it, and I, I have to give them a lot of credit to give up Nick Gilbert to go to the Francophone Games when they were really struggling. Obviously, Tony Towers has not been accustomed to this. In England, no. you don't go out in the street and ask fans for money. But in North America, to keep the franchise alive, in Congre to keep the franchise alive, full marks of them. I'm glad they did that. Well. All right, now, Commissioner Dale Barnes says it's just part of the growing pains, and that, in fact, the league could really expand. Do you think it's possible? I mean, do you, do you risk that, or do you make these franchises first viable in this league the way it is? Well, we know that Halifax is going to be strong, and hopefully London will be strong. And I would just hope that the Ottawa's and the Montreal's and the Congress can build from here. They've got a second lease on life. Hopefully they can take advantage of it because I don't want to see any club no. drop out. I want to see new clubs come in. And I think the way they're going here and the way they're going in Victoria, the way they're going in Winnipeg, North York, Toronto, three-week franchises is not bad. There's been other problems in other leagues like that. If they can just build on it from here, and keep going, we'll bring some more in. All right, let's, before we take a break, show you the CSL Player of the Week from the Winnipeg Fury, Jeff Cambridge. He scored a couple of goals, uh, then lost to Vancouver, and then he set up three in a big win over Toronto. The CSL Player of the Week, Jeff Cambridge, now eligible for the CSL MVP of 1989. Foster CSL Sunday on TSN. Goodbye. I've asked Rick here to teach me the barman's art of pouring a perfect Foster's lager, single-handed. How am I going so far? Not bad. This technique allows you to put the squeeze on the golden throat charmer with one hand, while you're putting the squeeze on the charming lady with the other. What more could a man ask for? Another arm, maybe. Foster's golden throat charmer. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges. Dylan's my grandson. No, I didn't know what was in my water until I had it tested. Oh. That's why I had a Pure Lux water purification system installed. Pure Lux from Electrolux, the company that's brought you the best quality home products for over 60 years. Pure Lux uses ultraviolet light and carbon filtration. Ultraviolet light to kill viruses and bacteria, carbon for organic contaminants. Pure Lux is so effective because it's the only one with a double pass system. Two passes through ultraviolet light. Uh, Pure Lux delivers great tasting water. 99.99% free of all bacteria and viruses. Instantly. Are you concerned about safe drinking water? Electrolux Water Systems would like to mail you an eye-opening report by Water Test Corporation of America. To get your free water report, call this toll-free number now. Hang on tight. You just crossed over into the end zone. Head-to-head -head NFL action is as close as your television. TSN, first with the NFL in four preseason matchups and eight regular season games at last with coverage of the Pro Bowl. TSN kicks off another NFL season as the 49ers battle the LA Rams at the American Bowl live from Tokyo, Japan. Join us in the end zone Saturday, August 5th at 10 Eastern right here on TSN. They've gotten some breaks in this 43-game undefeated streak, and this may have been a break as well to pick up the goal at 32 minutes. Vancouver leading 1-0 over Victoria. The Vistas started off very well, Graham, and in fact, they took it to them. Jaskin had a good opportunity to only be stopped by Merkel, but towards the middle of the half, you could see the 86ers gaining some confidence. They started to gain confidence. They started to push forward, and they got a little bit of a lucky break on the first goal from the corner kick. Brod's got this well to pam it out, but just watch Jim Easton get to the ball first. He cracks an absolute beauty. It rattles off the crossbar, hits Dale Mitchell. He'll take it. Not very pretty, but it's 1-0 for Vancouver. Jim Easton does oh so well to get this ball on target. Cracks it off the crossbar. Dale Mitchell following up. Chests it in, or had it hit his chest. It was 1-0. And Vancouver were pushing the ball around brilliantly now. They got the one goal advantage. Watch this little dummy. And watch how Dale Mitchell lays it wide to Ivor Evans. The Fiji Flash controls it well. We spoke about first touch. Cracks it, but Brod's gone way out on the edge of his six-yard box. Makes the save look super. Good goalkeeping by the youngster. And I tell you what, Vancouver now beginning to get the confidence and push it around. And the two veterans, Carol Valentine and, and 
Dale Mitchell, they're having an outstanding game, both all, of them. All right, let's check the out-of-town scores because it is a busy CSL Sunday. Toronto wins 3-0 over Edmonton as Pat Harrington gets the shutout. In Montreal, it wound up a 2-2 tie as Marinero and Damazetis scored for Hamilton, and it was Kutsukos and Gasparini, or Calabresi, pardon me, Calabresi scoring for the Supra. North York and Winnipeg, they are scoreless at halftime. The two teams slowly making their way to the field for the start of the second half. And it looks as if the Victoria Vistas are going to make a substitution. We've heard that Ernest Inner, the import, is going to come in in place of George Pecos. Pecos moved up front because of the injuries to Dallas Morn, did not really have a very good first half. And Bruce Wilson is desperately hoping to get back into this game and to get the first goal in the second half. The Vistas in there, blue with green pinstripes, white shorts, blue socks. The 86ers, yellow, blue and yellow. Dave McGill, number six. There you see Ernest Inna, the 21-year-old from Brooklyn College out of a New York City. Interesting story. He, like Ivor Evans, paid his own way to play in the CSL. Ivor Evans, of course, the 86ers came from Fiji. He came from Brooklyn on a bus, heard about the CSL, sent a tape up and said, hey, what do you think? They liked it, and they said, well, if you can get here, you can play. <laughs> and he got on a Greyhound, came across the country, and uh, he's lining up. And he started the very first game of the season that we did against the Winnipeg Fury, a uh, no-score tie in Victoria. The referee is Len Coombs. Checks his watch, makes sure his linesmen and linesmen are in position. One nothing, Dale Mitchell's goal, his second of the season at 32 minutes. Has Vancouver in front, one nothing. Forty-three games, forty-one regular season, two in the playoffs, and that's why their undefeated string is now at forty-three games. Hughes plays it back. Rodsgard upfield, looking for Checky. To Toto brought down. Once again, that substitution, Ernest Inna into the game for George Pecos. David Ravenhill on the far side will take this free kick. Checky, heads it through, Inna now has a chance, Inna gets by, oh, and then it's cleared out of danger by Steve McDonald, but right away, Ernest Inna making his presence felt, and a nice job by Steve McDonald. Making his pace felt as he got to this ball first. He rounds Merkel and perhaps could have hit it down, but he takes an extra stride, gives Steve McDonald a chance to recover as Mark Cartman and McDonald try to cover up for the young goalkeeper. And Bobby Lenarduzzi saying we were a little fortunate to survive that attack. Right away, Ernest Inner making his presence and his pace. Felt. Dave McGill to take the corner into the center of the box. Inner gets up and he just doesn't have the height to beat Rob Merkel. Now it's to Toto on the far side. Toto has Mitchell, edge of the box. Hughes, Iverson there as well. Ravenshill tries to clear. He gives it right back to Mitchell. 
Easton, top of the box, lifts it through. Mitchell is there. Can he get it across? Across the finally put in by Jamie Lowry. And I think he probably banged his leg off the post as he went by. Two minutes and 37 seconds into the second half, and Jamie Lowry pays for stretching for that ball. Vancouver players move out as Victoria move out. A little chip in is controlled brilliantly by Dale Mitchell. He rolls it across the face of the goal. Jamie Lowry rushes in, twists his knee. You can see there his right knee went all the way back. But what a little move there by Jim Easton. Brilliantly controlled. The first touch perfect. Watch Jamie Lowry reach for it then double back on that right knee. Ooh, that pucks. David McGill looks to go over the top here. Well, it wasn't McGill. That was solely Jamie Lowry who reached for it, knocked it in, and then had his knee buckle as the weight of his body went over the top of that knee. And he's had a good game, Jamie Lowry. He has to be a candidate for our Foster's player of the game. And to get that goal just two minutes, 30 seconds into the second half, especially after... Victoria having a great chance at the other end, isn't it? So often it happens when you miss it at one end, they go all the way up the field, knock it into the other net. Sammy Sound warming up just in case Jamie Lowry can't continue. Lou Morrow out and stretching that right knee. 2-0 Vancouver, the game by Lowry, his second of the season at the 48-minute mark, gives Vancouver the 2-0 lead. And don't forget, this Wednesday will be your last chance to see the 86ers for three weeks as they host... Bobby Leonard Doozy already Cooper missing. Greg Ian with a groin injury. Doug McKinty with a knee. Once again, a look. And this is Dave McGill running through. And does he get on the back of that knee and not no. twist that foot? No, no, no. No, it was the right knee, and it was solely the weight of Jamie Lowry who slid in. And I'm sure Jamie will take a little knock to get a goal, but he doesn't want to twist that knee for a goal because the philosophy of, is, of Vancouver is that if you miss one, we've got tons left in the bag. Somebody will get one later on. Great competitor, Jamie Lowry. He was injured at the start of this season, sat on the bench the last time we were here, but he gives you 100% every game. Trying to work it off. <laughs> and Carl Valentine said to him, you almost missed that one, Jamie. It was only a yard out. Oh, look at this. They had Sammy Sound up and ready to come in. In fact, the fourth official had the number, Lowry's number up, and wanted to make the substitution, but Bobby Leonard Uzi changed his mind. He's going to leave Lowry in. 2 nothing. Vancouver leading. Andrews and Merkel is there to pull it down upfield into touch it'll be a throw in for the Vistas played upfield this is Checky midfield and goes back Ravens Hill Looking for Ernest Inna. Belfiore. And John Hughes plays it to Brodsky. Bruce Wilson in his CSL coaching debut. Sees his vistas down 2 0. And it's a different game on the bench, Bruce. I'm sure you'd love to be out there doing it with the guys. Jaskin, can he get it across? It goes off the defender, Carpin, and into touch over the end line. It'll be a corner kick. Simon Keith, a remarkable story, warming up for the Vistas. Simon Keith, the 20-year-old from Scotland. Had a heart transplant a couple of years ago. In it, tries to get up just at the top of the box. Andrews turns. McGill back again. As they volley it back and forth across the top of the box. And it is hooked back into play by Andrews. But by then it's been over the end line. Over the sideline and it'll be a throw in. Yeah. 
They are all over the back of Gail Mitchell. He's been bumped a couple of times. <laughs> center forwards are accustomed to that. The center half is not going to let you bring the ball down without giving you a little bump, and Gail knows that. And interesting to see the last time we played here, he started off in midfield, and then he went back to sweep up when Dan Sadeko came off. So only Leonard Doozy can play Gail Mitchell anywhere and get a good performance out of him. 86ers throw in. Belfiore, Ivor Evans, little give and go as Easton moves up and it's pushed into touch. Again, throw in for the 86ers. Good crowd because they've, they've rung the field now on the other side as well. Trying to bust through to Toto, can't get there. But it goes over the end line and it will be a corner kick. Jim Easton. Five goals so far this year. Missed all of last year. Inna heads it away for the Vistas. As they've started to fall back now, Graham, and they may be a little bit of a tired team. Looks like Wayne. Carpet nicely sidesteps. Andrews and then plays it too far as he's looking for Ivor Evans and Dale Mitchell. Crossguard. Frank Woods, Evans marking him. Carpet heads it down. Evans will pick up the pieces of the pass. To Mitchell, who has a goal. Easton makes the run. Drops it. Here's Valentine. Valentine. And there's Brodsgaard. Look where Brodsgaard is. The young keeper was way outside his six yard line. It's the Vancouver Indians are pushing around Arrogant. And the ball's made square to Valentine. Sitting nicely. Hits it well. Good goalkeeping. Dave McGill, Jaskin, Inna, Checky, you're in the middle. They can't get the ball across. I think while well, we've got a break in the action, I played in two golf tournaments for charity last week. The good folks at Kelsey held the Fred Scampati tournament at Glen Abbey for the Cancer Society, and the Ontario Automobile Dealers Association held their tournament at Barry. Great events. Congratulations, folks. McGill crosses it. Inna will try. And it goes off of Sudeiko and over the end line, another corner kick. Of course, Fred's combat, it'll be 10 years in November since Fred died of cancer. What a great guy. One of the most popular media people ever in Canada. Headed down, yes, is it? Oh, my, look at that. There was Ken Andrews, and he tried the one-time volley, and Merkel in the right spot at the right time. Well, Ken Andrews won't get the much better chance than this. Give him credit, he takes it well. Hits it beautifully, but looks as if there's magnets in Rob Merkel's gloves, or else he anticipated it well. I'll tell you what, Sven Haberman getting a rest tonight, and young Rob Merkel playing his first game of the season during the next one. Valentine trying to bust through, and then he's brought down by Steve Checky. And they're going to bring the two big guys, Dan Sadeko and Steve McDonald, up to the far post. But don't be surprised if Dale Mitchell tries to curve this one in as well, although he prefers it from the other side. Get back, says Mr. Len Coombs, as he moves the wall back. Watch for somebody to run across the ball and then to have Mitchell move up behind. Everyone set. Here goes Valentine over the ball. Here goes Mitchell. Oh, what a save! Still there. Oh, and now over the bar. What a great save. And then Guido Totoro just over the bar. <laughs> hey, Bruce Wilson should know that Dale Mitchell can crack them from there. What a brilliant shot, and what a brilliant save by Shell Brodsgaard. This ball is in the corner, Reese absolutely stones him. Chance come back to young Guido Pitolo, he hooks it over. But this is a brilliant save. Valentine follows up, nods it across, and young Pitolo hits it into the turf, but it bounces over the crossbar. Great save, Shell Brodsgaard, outstanding save. Of course, Shell Brodsgaard played in the semi-final in the Frankathorn games and 
got Canada yet another win. The Vistas have made their second substitution. Simon Keith has come into the game, replacing number 18, Ken Andrews. Simon Keith. Steve McDonald. Oh, and he goes right away. First chance he gets, he goes for that far post. Well, why not try it right off the bat? It's rolling nicely. Just slices a little bit. Doesn't really test Bob Marco, but when you get into the game, make your mark right away. He came on as a sub in that first game we televised this year in TSN against Winnipeg and really brought the Victoria Vistas to life. Very entertaining player. Pushed forward for Jaskin. Can he get it across? It'll go off the defender, Belfiore. It'll be a corner kick for the Vistas, who find themselves behind 2-0. Dale Mitchell in the first half at 32 minutes, and Jamie Lowry very quickly, three minutes in. 2-0. McGill, top of the box, Caskin is there. Simon Keith. And then it's put over the bar by Brian Pink. 2-0. Vancouver leading CSL Sunday, a Foster's telecast. Crack open a great light beer. New Foster's Light. <laughs> Vancouver leading 2-0. Second half here at Swan Guard Stadium. The brother along with Graham Leggett. Jaskin, edge of the box. Belfiore marking him. And Belfiore doing a good job. To knock it over the end line again, it'll be another corner kick for the Vistas. Ivano Belfiore. Had a goal a year ago. His first season has no goals so far this year. And there are not many players on the Vancouver 86ers who can claim that distinction. McGill, Iverson has moved up top of the box. And the last head to it was Simon Keith. Yes, indeed. An interesting comment Bruce Wilson made at the beginning of the telecast that tomorrow is the signing deadline. So unless he makes a couple of trades this evening or tomorrow morning, he's going to have to go with the roster he's got now. But we've seen them come out and not play too well in the first half and seem to pick the game up in the second half and they seem to be doing that right now. Played upfield by Raven Hill. Checky is bumped off the ball and Checky is charged with the foul and it'll be a free kick for the 86. For Mitchell, Easton, Ernest Inne just knocks it down but finds some space. Ernest Inne drops it off for Brian Payne. Off the bat, oh nicely played by Simon Keith as he took it in the back then he healed it down. All Scots can play like that? I think the back here was a little oh. bit of an accident but it looked good and the thing that impressed me was the challenge when he went head to head with Dan Sudeiko. It was Dan Sudeiko's ball all the way, but Simon Keith sort of threw himself in there, won the ball, and Steve Checky a little unfortunate to be given offside. Easton, midfield, Titoto. Easton, Belfiore, Valentine. Mitchell, Titoto, Lowry have all moved up. Lowry is there. Ernest Inna. Lowry. 
shaking up that twisted knee he suffered during his old carpet. Just a little too. Oh! Iverson getting crossed up with Rosgard and Iverson nearly put it into his own net. Gave away the corner. Saying, yep, it was my fault. I didn't listen to the shout. I tried to flick it to you. I didn't realize you were behind me. And ooh, of course, Bruce can only sit there and watch. Valentine out east. Looks like Jim Easton's got his shooting boots back again, and Bob Lenarduzzi is ever so pleased. He moves onto this ball so well. Just hooks it. Was supposed to dip under the ball. Didn't quite dip quickly enough. Hamilton at Montreal is tied two all, and as we told you earlier, Toronto shutting out Edmonton three nothing. Three other games are all final now. Toronto beats Edmonton three nothing. McCallum, Pesce, Salido, and Sanchez for the Blizzard. Hamilton, Marinero, and Domazetis, Montreal, Catalese, and Kutsukas, and North York, Winnipeg is final. Verdusco for the Rockets, Steve Miller for the Fury. And it's 2-0 Vancouver, and they're looking for more as the PG Flash, Ivor Evans. Squirts one across the top of the grass, and Rosgard was right there. Tough ball to hit because he was halfway on the turn. I thought perhaps Ivor Evans, if he loved to do, would just take a little touch, give himself a chance to turn, then track it. But chose to hit it first time, and once again, Shell Brooks got way off his line, anticipated it well. But you have to be impressed. Ever since they got the goal, Vancouver have been pushing men forward. Whenever there's what somebody on the ball, there's three yellow shirts give him an alternative. Can I put it to him or push it wide? There's everybody in the team seems to want the ball and take it off the ball carrier. Ivor Evans lays it off the near side for Valentine. Evans, Mitchell head in, Carpenter has moved up, and then he crosses it in behind, Evans, Easton to Toto, and now it bounces and bounces, and it, it'll get over the end line, and it will be a corner kick as it went off a defender. And on that occasion, the yellow shirts of Vancouver got up the support much more quickly than the blue shirts of Victoria Vistas got back to defend. They just came forward and drove. Valentine looking for Mitchell and it's headed away. Carpet, Valentine. De Toto. Ivor Evans. Valentine plays it off. Ernest in over the sideline. It'll be a throw in for the 86ers. But maybe it's true what Bruce says. If they're slow to get back, maybe they are tiring. Well, if anybody can get them fit, it's Bruce Wilson, but. I wouldn't say that this is the major fault here. It's just that Vancouver are so confident. They're pushing people forward. They've got so many opportunities. Mitchell! Oh, he hooked it. He told her then in late, and he puts it over the bar. John Hughes back to defend on Guido Tototo. But just so many yellow shirts here. It, it almost seems as if the ball has to bounce to a yellow shirt. Dale Mitchell has a crack, is deflected back to a yellow shirt, but Guido Di Toro hooks it high over. The youngster is not getting the ball to break for us today. Our location, well, there are 4,500 <laughs> plus, and we are right in the middle of them here at Swan Guard. It's an excellent spot to uh, watch a game and describe it to you. CSL Sunday on TSN. Pass through. Simon Keith hoping to spring Checky through, but he pushed it just a little too far. Merkel from the top of the box over the midway line. Iverson, McGill, Ernest Inna. Gets away from Valentine. Lowry now right on his back. The through ball to the far side for Jasper. Cross it. Carpen can control. Simon Keith. Gets it across. Oh. You can hear him fight off 
Dave McGill, who was right in his face. Good play, and just watch this ball by Simon Keith. You think it has to be Dave McGill? Wrong. Rob Merkel, courage, good hands, and that was right away from David McGill, but good play by Simon Keith once again to bring that ball to the byline and cut it across. That could quite easily have been deflected by a Vancouver player into his own net. <laughs> My ball, says Carroll. Slow it down now, we're up 2-0. taken away by John Hughes who makes a run from his center back spot and then he just loses ground to a much faster Jim Easton. Long way to run for a center back. Yeah, but he's more accustomed to left back and that's what he loves to do, to break wide on that left wing and when he gets to the byline, he's got a beautiful left foot, he crosses the ball superbly. But Jim Easton just had too much pace for John Mann. Now John has to get all the way back to his center back. Ernest Inna dropped back to cover. It is, without doubt, in my opinion, Graham, the best place, the most scenic, certainly, to broadcast. Swan Guard Stadium, absolutely gorgeous. We enjoy coming here every time, and we thank the people, the organization, for their help. Yes, indeed, and if we are doubtful about a player, we can always ask the 4,800 <laughs> fans in the stands because we're sitting right in amongst them. Oh, cleared up field quickly by Easton for Mitchell. Now, just watch the yellow shirt support. We've got one, two, three, four, break and lay. Ivor Evans turns on it, lays it back. Mitchell, Lowry to Toto are in the middle. Mitchell gets by Ravenshill. Mitchell has to go on with it with Valentine as they set it up again. Valentine to the near side carpet. Cuts it across. Iverson heads it away. McGill for the Vistas. Ernest Inna turns and looks, decides not to give it to his keeper to the far side and then over the head of Rick Jaskin. Been a busy night for Shell Bronskar, the Vista keeper has given up a couple of goals to Mitchell and Lowry. But I tell you what, he stood in for Grant Darley, who had played every minute of every game. The youngster's done so well. Iverson gets across and knocks it over the end line. It'll be another corner kick. Ivor Evans. Three goals so far this year. He had nine a year ago in his third season. As the crowd starting to come alive, head it down. Is there anybody there to pick it up? No, and it's finally cleared away by John Hughes. Lowry heads it to carpet. They feed on goals, the 86ers. They love it. They just keep coming at you. And this time, the foul is called on the 86ers as Belfiore got the boot up, and it was blown dead by Mr. Len Goo. You gotta like their style, though. They, that's something, that's a philosophy that they've believed in since day one of the CSL two and a half years ago. The way we're going to win fans and influence people is by scoring goals. Well, there's no doubt about it. That's the way to play. I've always maintained there's two ways to play soccer. One is to stop your opponent scoring more goals than you. The other way is to go out and score more goals than your opponents. And certainly, Vancouver, like the Edmonton Oilers, if you want a comparison, they go out and try and score more goals than their opponents. And that's the only way to play it. Brazil played like that for years. The goalkeeper put a but they never needed a goalkeeper. Unfortunately, it's difficult when you're the opposition and the head coach, such as Bruce Wilson, Valentine gets away. Titoto across. Got his head to it, and then it just sort of died past the far post. He made a dive like that at Stanley Park yesterday playing volleyball, but this one was a great run. Once again, Carol oh. Valentine pushes an outstanding ball to Guido Titoto. First time cross, Ivor Evans saw it himself, a little behind him, so he oh. had a difficulty getting it on target, but a great effort. And I tell you what, young Guido Titoto, who came on as sub, certainly 
showing the depth of this Vancouver 86ers organization. What a game he's having. He's a youngster fitting in with two veterans like Carl Valentine and Dale Mitchell and not looking out of place one little bit. Kitoto with five goals so far this season. Picking up some of the slack for people such as Catlip, who's under the game right now, and Mobilio, who was late to get here this season. The running off the ball is, is superb. No matter who's on the ball, there's three yellow shirts making space, making themselves available. And this player has to be a candidate for Foster's player of the game. Valentine across, and it's headed and punched away. Easton pushes it through Evans and in a battle over the end line and they're saying that it was Iver Evans who put it across and it'll be goal ball. We've been lucky for the with the weather as well. You can tell in the background there the mountains are shrouded in some so far no rain that is in the forecast, but it has been dry so far here at Swanbrook. Ernest in it plays it up. About the first time in a few minutes now that the Vistas have been over the halfway line. Inna. Simon Keith makes a run. McGill across. Cleared away by Sudeko. Valentine heads it down. Hank takes control for the Vistas. John Hughes. Long pass. Much too far for McGill and Carpen just neatly stepped in between to take it away. Lowry. Valentine. Mitchell is in the middle. To the right. It's Ivor Evans. Valentine waits. Battles. Woods trying to take it away. Evans picks up the pieces for Mitchell. Little give and go. Easton gets around and then it goes off Hank and over the end line and it will be a corner kick for the 86ers. They're pretty, but I guess they're also being helped out now because the Vistas are starting to sit back. Well, they've got no choice. They have to sit back because Vancouver keeps coming at them, but the arrogance and the confidence, the little <laughs> back heels, they're almost saying to themselves, we can score at will. With a 2-0 lead, maybe they can. But you've got to give the Victoria Vistas credit. They're hanging in there. They're sticking to the task. They're obviously trying to impress the new coach and say, okay, we can win in this league, just stay with us and give us a couple of little pointers that may just help us. And certainly, number one, Shell Brodsgaard, no fault of his that the Victoria Pistols are down 2-0 to the Vancouver 86. Well, he made an absolutely brilliant stop on a set piece by Dale Mitchell, could have easily been three. Throw in for the Vistas. This is Pink. Trying to work his by, way by Easton. Simon Keith to the near side for Woods. Valentine marking him. Ernest Inna, Dave McGill, Keith, they're all in the middle. And the ball too far as they try to go for Steve Checky. And Bobby Lanarduzzi will want to win this game badly because they play Winnipeg here on Wednesday. Then they go on a five-game road trip. That could be tough. Evans with the cross. Goes off the defender, John Hughes, and over the sideline. Throw in for the 86. They've turned the lights on here at Swan Guard as it has gotten progressively more cloudy, a little darker. Easton. This is Titoto. Evans. Oh. And it's on Belfiore. Ivano Belfiore. Free kick for the Vistas. Pink. Jaskin for John Hughes, and he's under pressure, and he quickly gives it back to Rosgar. 2-0. Vancouver leading. 
15 minutes remaining. Ivor Evans. To Toto for Lowry. Belfiore. Surrounded. Checky. Can't take the ball away. McDonald plays it forward. Over the sideline, it'll be throw in for the 86ers. Belfiore for Easton, and he'll do it. For Ivor Evans, marked closely by Iverson. To Toto, Evans, Belfiore has moved up. Comes across the field for Carpet. Valentine hustles and gets back in time, and then there was really nobody up to challenge and help him, and so it was easily played by Brodsky. We've mentioned a couple of times the injuries that both these sides have, but we failed to mention that two starting fullbacks for Vancouver are injured, Greg Ion and Doug McGinty, but I have to say, once again, the strength of the bench, Mark Carpen and Ivano Belfiore have done really well filling in. John Hughes arguing with Mr. Gord Rogers that it was Ivor Evans who headed the ball into touch. Mr. Rogers disagreed. Carpet. Near ball to Mitchell, trying to get away from Iverson. To Evans. To Toto. Lowry are in the box. Carpet. Sudeiko. Iverson gets up to head it down for Checky. And Checky gets the foul on McDonald. And every single player except Rob Merkel in the Vancouver 86ers goal is now at least 25 yards into the Victoria Vistas half. Easton chips the blue for McDonald. They look for the offside. Trap wasn't called. Belfiore. Kitoto to Valentine. Boy, they're just throwing it around here. Belfiore across, Mitchell. Ernest Inna is there to pick it up for the Vistas. Now they'll try to work it out. McGill settles it down, but gives it right back to Steve McDonald for Valentine. For Carpen, a little too far. A little too far, and I think that was the only bad ball Carl Valentine has hit the whole game. As we look at Mark Carpen, the right fullback, Carl Valentine has to be one of the prime candidates for our fastest player of the game award. Outstanding, used the ball so well, obviously enjoying himself out there. Dave McGill. Ernest Inna. For Pink. Simon Keith. Inna, top of the box. Inna, tries it himself. Like Keith. It goes off the defender. And it'll be a corner kick. Dave McGill will take the corner. He takes all the corners for the business. McGill into the box. Merkel is out to punch it away. Oh, and just over the bar, Brian Pink. Well, Dave McGill swings this corner across, and Rob Merkel's lack of height lets him down a little bit. He can only partially clear it. It bounces to Brian Pink. He hits it beautifully, but as you can see from our behind-the-goal camera, high and wide, but pretty handsome, Brian. Good hit. Brian Pink, last year with Winnipeg, had a couple of goals out of the University of Victoria. That's something that the Vistas hope to cap as well. Bruce Wilson, the head coach of the University of Victoria Vikings. So they hope to uh, maybe cap that player for the players on that team as well. Simon Keith works through. Look out, look out. Yeah. Yeah. Simon Keith! 
took a wicked deflection and Rob Merkel, who was way out on the edge of his six-yard box, didn't even try. After 37 minutes in the second half, full marks to Simon Keith, beats the deck a well, tries his luck from outside the box, it deflects off Jamie Lowry, goes high over Rob Merkel, two to one. Looks like it's going over the bar, wrong. Rob Merkel takes a vicious deflection, knocks it past him into the net. And we said Simon Keith has disabilitated long even up the Victoria Vistas, by example, obviously. For Simon Keith, his third goal this season, and it comes in the 80th minute. And it's two to one. But he seemed to just walk in and then let it go, and it deflected certainly off Lowry. There was another foot in there as well. It may have taken a double ricochet, but... Well, Steve McDonald and Jamie Lowry both went to try and tackle Simon Keith, but Keith got the shot off too quickly, and once again, it's Shell Drodsgaard who reads it and comes way off his line. Ivor Evans in the challenge. Make it tough for Brodsgaard. Through ball for Checky is headed away by Sudeiko. To Toto. Ravenshill all over his back. The 86ers to the near side for Mark Carpenter. Trying to get away from Keith and does. McDonald, Belfiore, Titoto, McDonald, Mitchell, Evans lays it off. This is Jamie Lowry. And then Jamie plays it in behind everybody. Carpenter moves up and it'll be a throw in. You know, we've spoken often about the 43 game undefeated streak. They're still counting. But they have gone 26 games at home undefeated in their whole history they've only lost twice last time they lost 3-1 lost to Congress September 2nd 1987 and there's one of the candidates for our player of the game Foster's player of the game Carol Valentine outstanding Mitchell heals it back for Valentine and this is check Pushed over the sideline by Danny Sudeiko. Steve Checky out of the University of Victoria, the 23-year-old in his first CSL season. Woods with the throw in. As top of the box, headed away to Toto. Oh, nicely done with Pink right there. He plays it off to Easton. Making a run, he leaves it for Tototo. Tototo across the top of the box. Evans to the middle. Lowry, that's where the ball goes. Valentine runs off the ball to the left. Belfiore to the near side. Carpent, top of the box. Carpent tries to chip it through and can't get it there. But boy, are they ever deliberate in their setup. Two to one now, Vancouver leading Victoria. Lowry battling it for the ball. Hank wins it and clears it upfield. Oh, offside. John Hayes saying that Simon Keith broke too quickly. And I think Jamie Lowry felt that a little bit. He's suffering from a little bit of a twisted knee he got in the first half when he scored Vancouver's second goal. But the game performer, he's hung in very well. That right knee. Mitchell. Lowry. Head for Ivor Evans and John Hughes back to defend and push it over the inbound. And Carol Valentine will trot out to the left wing and put this with his right foot, make it an in-swinger. 
It comes, and it comes right down. Well, Bruce Wilson must be absolutely delighted with the performance of Shell Brodsgaard. His goalkeeper has been outstanding. Ivor Evans for Tototo. Easton takes it. McGill for Ernest Inna. And he just gives it away. Carpen. Ivor Evans. Titoka. What a nice pass. And it's pushed over the sideline by John Hughes. Bruce Wilson couldn't stand to sit anymore. He had to get up. Carpen throws it in. Titoto gives it right back. Carpen across the box. Valentine is there. Lowry. Get there in time. No, it'll go just over the sideline. It'll be a throw in for the Vistas. J.B. Lowry. His goal. Three minutes into this second half right now. The winner, Vancouver leading. 2-1 over Victoria. Checky. And again, it'll be a throw-in for the Vistas. Rick Jaskin. Cramping in his right leg, trying to stretch out his calf muscle. Ernest Inna has a couple of goals so far this year for the Vistas. Merkel up here. Inna through for Simon Keith, and there was nobody breaking. If the Vistas are going to get the tying goal, though, they've got to put some more people up front. They've only got the two. They've got to certainly push more people forward. Well, they don't have long to do it, and right now it's Vancouver on the ball, and I'm sure they'll just try and keep possession and waste a little time here and there. Easton for Evans, cleared up field by Ravenshill. And there you get an indication they're just yellow shirts back there to take those passes. Nobody challenging for the Vistas. But where there were only two yellow shirts ten minutes ago, there are now four yellow shirts. The back four are staying back. Goal side all the time. They've got a 2-1 lead. Even Valentine now is not making the forward runs. He's staying back just to pick up loose ball. Here's Valentine for Tototo. By our watch, we're into injury time. And it's played over the in line and it will be a corner kick as Len Coombs does check his watch. It'll be a throw in for the 86ers for Valentine across the top of the box. Valentine Rothschild makes the save uh -oh. so quickly. Carol Valentine I think has turned the clock back about five years tonight he's had an outstanding performance has to be the favorite for a first player of the game Bruce. been everywhere used the ball so well there he is again valentine bruce wilson there off the bench as soon as the ball came to him he hustled it back to his home players said come on fellas you haven't got very much time here easton makes a run easton oh, oh, oh. You'd think Bobby was losing two to one. What a great effort. Jim Easton started off with a dreadful shot. They've got better and better. This one is so close. Just sliced it a little bit. He actually beat Shell Brodsgaard, but also sliced it enough to go wide of the post. Great effort, Jim. Evans, top of the box. To Toto. Easton, through for Valentine. Easton is through. Hughes. Ernest Inna there to cover up, and it's pushed over the end line. 
And how many of these little death flicks have we seen from Valentine and Mitchell this evening? Just perfect timing, really showing their experience. Headed away by Hughes. Lowry. And there's the whistle from Mr. Len Coombs, and it is now 44 games and counting for the Vancouver 86ers. Chris Wilson obviously disappointed, but I think he'll be very proud of the way the Victoria Vistas played. Obviously, Vancouver 86ers could ball you for the 2-1 to one win, especially in the second half. 2-1 to one the final, Woo! Vancouver wins it. Now it's time for the TSN Turning oh, Point, Merkel. brought to you by Remington. Well, our TSN Turning Point came just into the second half. Ernest Inner gets to the ball first, rounds Merkel, but hesitates. And Steve McDonald recovers to save the day. It could have been one all. Vancouver went right upfield and scored. Steve McDonald saved the Remington turning point. A cash donation will be made to Amateur Sport on behalf of TSN and Remington. Remington, the grooming company. Once again, the final score, Vancouver 2, Victoria 1. Foster CSL Sunday on TSN. I used to say that I didn't want to quit, but the fact was that I couldn't quit. And thanks to LifeSign, I'm a non-smoker. With this product, I really stopped smoking. I mean, I've, I truly do not smoke anymore. And it works. <laughs> it really works. Thousands of smokers, just like you, are quitting smoking with a new and completely different method that really works, once and for all. Hello, I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm an ex-smoker, so I know how tough it is to quit. Well, now there's an easy way with this breakthrough product called LifeSign. Everything I tried failed until LifeSign came along. It was...